<laughs> Speaking of weddings, <laughs> I'm gonna br- I'm gonna bring it all together now, right? Speaking of weddings, where might you go for a wedding? Barbados, not uh, no. Las <laughs> Vegas. There was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll and and who might you find in Las Vegas? Gamblers, gamblers with, the, mm. with addictions. Yeah, well, Lindsay you, Lohan, possibly. <laughs> The corpse of Elvis Presley, what not? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's in Grisland. He's not dead. He's, he's, not gri- dead. he's in Grisland. Still alive. Yeah, apparently he's not he's dead. He's in Cuba. That brings us on to our next film. Elvis and Nixon. Oh, boy. Right. Uh. From 9.20 to 11.30, you have your meetings with Mr. Haldeman, Mr. Kissinger, and Mr. Ziegler. From 11.40 to 12.05, you have a meeting in the Grand Hall to receive diplomatic credentials from the ambassadors of the Dominican Republic and Zambia. Do they speak any English? I believe so. Oh, good. I hate it when they don't even try. You know, whenever I go to a foreign country, I always try to learn some phrases, you know, gives me an edge with the people of that country. You know, shows I did my homework, shows I care. Some people come right in here, no effort, no effort whatsoever. Not in their national character. Why, they'll never be superpowers like us. From 12.05 to 105, you have your open hour, at the end of which we thought would be a good time to have your meeting with Mr. Presley. From 110 to 130, you have an informal meet and greet with 150 or so White House volunteers in the state dining Elvis, room. Elvis Presley. Yes, sir. The entertainer. Oh, I know who Elvis Presley is, yes. Yeah, I was, uh, I was terrified. I, um, the producer, Holly Wiersma, I had worked with her on Bug, and uh, she mentioned it, this idea a couple years ago. And I just kept thinking, you know, she's crazy. This just isn't a good idea. I don't, but she just wouldn't leave it. She wouldn't leave it alone, you know, so. And then, um, you know, I read the script and I was like, this is actually, this is a really good script. And I liked it because it wasn't trying to tell his entire life story. It was telling a very specific period, a very specific story moment in his life. Elvis Presley was um, very concerned uh, in 1970 about where the United States was. He was a a guy who many people may remember, he he was a huge supporter of law enforcement. He had a collection of badges that he'd gotten from lots of different law enforcement uh, facilities all across the country. Uh, He was an honorary policeman and and, uh, he was concerned about the protests against the Vietnam War. He was concerned about the lack of respect for law enforcement, uh, the lack of respect for the presidency. A lot of things he was concerned about, the Black Panthers and infiltration by communists. And he, he was, far, I think, far more conservative than a lot of people might have suspected. Michael Shannon as Elvis and Kevin Spacey as Nixon. I wonder what that makes. Oh yeah, Elvis and Nixon. It makes Elvis and Nixon. Yep. There's where did the and come from though? I don't know. I where... didn't see any ands in that film. <laughs> I don't know. Did That's you just... see any hands? Nope. No, you didn't see any hands. Nope. There you go. Inaccurate. So Inaccurate. Last week's big point was <laughs> last week's big point was that I would want to see Stop Patrick Stop banging the Wilson. table. Oh. You can hear it. Stop oh, banging apologies. the table. Right. Go uh, on. Yeah, but look, go on. <laughs> look, it's apology. Then the last thing that I thought last week was the fact that Patrick Wilson should play Elvis. Yeah. And I, I still stand by that because he nailed it as Elvis. Now, Michael Shannon is a bit of a sort of off, wild card. Off candor. Like, yeah, why, oh, a bit of a wild card choice. I mean, Kevin Spacey as well as a strange choice as Nixon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when he plays stuff on in the bottle. Like, yeah. just, like, what, it's that, just, that, so that, distracting. I'm just I, like, I'm just like, it's, 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 a, it's a plastic bottle. I can hear every little movement. Okay, well, apologies. <laughs> just... Leave my line. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, but no, I mean, in, in this, obviously, Shannon is Elvis and Spacey Kevin Spacey is Nixon, Nixon, as you've pointed out. Mm-hmm. And basically, it conlogs the meeting in 1970 in December where basically Elvis wanted to arrange a meeting with Nixon and sort of just discuss the fact that Elvis wanted to use his status and his power as as well his power and status of that time of how amazingly popular he was. I'm probably like the most popular person on the planet and the person with the most influence apart from the president at the time mm. and to use her power to be a sort of uh, an FBI agent at large undercover which doesn't agent at exact, large yeah. which doesn't exist yeah. at all what? <laughs> yeah he, he straight up said in his letter that he wants to be an undercover agent at large not a federal agent at large mm. wow. and <laughs> because he wants to use his influence to sort of bust cartels and bust like drugs well it was, it was, it was worried about the youth that the, the youth were becoming involved in drinking drugs he wanted to sort of steer them away from that path and towards a more healthy lifestyle yeah. that didn't involve those but obviously he, the, the way he was talking 
news thing. He was going to be like busting drugs from like undercover positions, like get in. And like, he, he's like saying, like, I've got to gain their trust. Can you imagine like a cartel just like Elvis Bustle and through the dark? <laughs> <laughs> like, I would watch an Elvis karate movie. I would. There is one. Was that? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's just saying like he wants to um, just do that and. You know, like well, he kind of he kind of just wanted the badge to gain their trust. He just wanted the badge because he's like, well, I've got honorary badges from all of these states. Can I have an FBI badge? And that just sort of <laughs> sets up how ludicrous this film is. They play up the the ludicrousness of the meeting of the fact that this well, is yeah, the stuffiest, no one, yeah. most one of the most conservative presidents of all time, meeting with Elvis Presley, the man who got chaps and wears a massive belt around his waist with the biggest, most obvious sideburns of any man who's ever lived and it plays up to that pretty brilliantly i mean it, it feels like a tv special mm-hmm. the entire time yeah it's very strangely made i mean the, there's like they'll have like sections of stock footage where they're driving from place to place so they'll have like a bit of a bit of uh, washington dc in the past stock footage and it'll cut to sort of a similar shot of them driving down the road but it's elvis in re- like like filmed footage especially filmed hd footage so when it's going back from that it's quite awkward and it's oddly made in that way and it does feel like a TV special a lot of the times. Yeah. There's not too much going on. The build-up to the actual meeting takes quite a while. I can't remember any of but it. But to be honest, I think it is it is quite funny in parts and it, it is it does play up to the ludicrousness of the of the whole situation and the characters. The characters are played in very broad strokes. I mean, it's all the sort of usual stuff you expect from Nixon, obviously. He, he plays... It is sort of a characterisation, sort of a... Caricature. Yeah, but yeah pretty yeah. much. A caricature of, of Nixon by Kevin Spacey. He's got the grumbles and the gruff look and the the prosthetic nose and everything. He, he does he does his best to to fill that character. He does well. Michael Shannon's really really strange, and actually really enjoyed him doing that. I mean, obviously he looks nothing like Elvis, but mm. he's just he's so warm and lovable and sort of a bit off, you yeah. know. Like yeah. he's, he's like strange. Like he yeah. encompasses that yeah, really well. I think he does. He that's does really he, what? That's Mickey Shannon. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's he's got sort of that look about him. I think it's, he does really well in here. I mean, there's like a hundred million thousand scenes where there's like random thousand. women it's quite a screaming yeah like because elvis has entered the room and then you've got the usual end as well like oh elvis presley has left the building the king. and yeah just all, all over the place and it's just it it does what it does it, it is a tv special but it doesn't really get too much into it because obviously it takes I mean, way too long to get to the meeting. yeah it's an 86 minute film and maybe 20 of that 30 of that is the meeting mm-hmm. itself and it's mean, the whole thing about alex pettifer's character i don't really understand yeah and the former stormbreaker yeah that's very well that was very weird i didn't care yeah. about any of that alex pettifer's in it uh-huh. yeah yeah and then um, johnny knoxville and colin hank and Evan Peters as well they're all supporting characters well, basically um, as Elvis's agent and these members of the White House who sort of have to deal with Nixon and as the meeting gets there it gets extremely absurd when it gets to the meeting because obviously the, the, the two clashing personalities I mean there's one great scene where the representatives of both of the parties are sitting down and telling what people what, and what they have to do to accommodate these people so it's like Elvis likes M&M's that uh, uh, Nixon has a ball of M&M's do not touch them what's the first thing Elvis does when he gets sat down in the meeting takes the president's bottle of Dr Pepper and takes a handful of his M&M's so that just sort of sets up the whole meeting's tone really so yeah I mean it it is enjoyable for what it's worth I mean there's a few funny moments some good flourishes I do like the two portrayals and it's got a really good funky soundtrack but no Elvis songs strangely no, presumably didn't get the rights yeah presumably didn't get the rights but yeah I mean for what it's worth it, it was an okay ride but I've really forgotten quite a bit of the details I already because it it's away. very forgettable I feel like it would work if it was like an episode of Drunk History. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the only way I could see it work. If it was if it was like a, sh- a shorter TV film, like you've said, or if it was Drunk History, because that'd have been funny. Yeah, like, I, I, obviously nobody knows the exact details of what happened in the meeting because it's kind of classified, or you know what the, the meetings, what the uh, the minute the minutes for the meeting weren't held. Yeah, uh, so the fact to kind of make it up, but you can kind of imagine that is probably what happened. A yeah. bit of, a bit of karate. But yeah, it really does have karate yeah. scene. Yeah. yeah, karate, karate. Yeah, but it's just weird. I mean, obviously, it's just it's a bit of a character study, really, more than just anything. Trying to, I would have pre- I would have preferred to have way more time in the meeting room. Yeah, I felt like we do we just scratch the surface on that, and it feels like a bit of a wasted opportunity. But there you go. Well, one will have like Elvis versus beating Nixon. itself in very yes, very El- <laughs> Elvis <laughs> versus Nixon. <laughs> well, I, I, I think there could be some kind of formula here of like mm. like you say like Elvis versus Nixon, just taking two yeah. unlikely stars and put them together and just sort of seeing what would happen if you put them in a room together. Yeah, but, but um, wasted yeah, opportunity, I think. Embraces the absurdity for what it's worth, and it's a it was an okay watch, but I've forgotten most of it already. Same, so. same. Wouldn't uh, recommend it really.